So there on your screen is a recipe for chicken euros. But I'm going to say gyros because that's what it looks like, isn't it? There's some photographs of it and I'm going to run you through making these absolutely delicious kebabs. So there's a lot of ingredients to get through. There they are. I'm using fresh mint and parsley. Just giving them a chop up. This is for the marinade. This is probably the most important part. So get all the flavor into your marinade. Choose a nice big bowl like I've done there. That is a full fat natural yogurt. I'm sure it'd be fine if you want to use a low fat. I've got all my spices and my herbs going in there. There's the garlic going in. If I can get it through my garlic crusher, which I finally went out and bought. I used to just have to mince it on the board, but you know, I got extravagant and went out and bought one. There's some lemon juice. Don't worry about getting the pips out. We'll notice those later. Just give that a nice mix. I don't think I wrote down pepper on the recipe, so obviously just add pepper as well, please, folks. An extra virgin olive oil. You get extra points if you use a Greek one, I guess. I don't know where that one's from. Doesn't really matter. I thought I'd show you me sharpening my knife. I use one of them, a chantry, and then I've got what's called a diamond edge steel. That is how I keep my knives nice and sharp. And that is for Josh, who asked me how I did it. What I'm doing here, my chicken thighs, if you've got chicken thighs with skin on, obviously take the skin off. And then I'm just going to go through them. I'm going to check with my fingers for any bits of gristle or bone that have been left on. And there was a few bits, so that's why I took the time here. It's a bit messy, really. You can use breast if you want. It's a bit simpler, but it just will not be anywhere near as nice. I assure you, with the thighs, this is what's going to make this delicious. This is pretty gross as well, but it's worth taking your time here and kind of massaging the marinade into each bit of thigh. Make sure every single bit of exposed meat has got the marinade on it. I'm covering that with cling film. And that had at least an hour, somewhere between one and two hours. If I were you, I probably wouldn't marinate overnight. I think it might be too strong. But it's worth giving it a risk, I suppose. That's up to you. To accompany mine, I served with some pita breads and I made a, a kind of slaw. I was thinking about when you go in the kebab shop here in the UK, which is normally a doner kebab, and I really like the salad they put in with it, you know, the cabbage and onions and stuff. So I thought, I'll just make myself a slaw. So that is some white cabbage, some red onion, I put some parsley, olive oil, and salt and pepper. And I did that about 20 minutes or so before I actually made these. I didn't want them to be too long, too far in advance because it will go all soft. I wanted some crunch still. And by all means, don't add any olive oil if you want to keep this really crunchy in your fridge for a few days. And it will keep very nice indeed. That's the parsley. Season to your liking. Give it a good toss around. That nice. So this is setting up this kebab to cook in the oven. Now, I've been watching other videos how to do this. 
and it's an interesting technique. So what they normally do is put one skewer right through the middle. And I thought, well, Alex, I've got quite a lot to go on, so it'll be more stable if I use two skewers. I think I was wrong. Um, but I thought I'd keep it in a video and you can make up your decision. If you wanted to do this and lay it flat on the barbecue, for instance, forget the onion, but do use the two skewers because it'll be more secure when you want to turn it this way or that way. The classic Euros or Gyros method is you put one skewer and you do what I'm doing here with the onion, one piece on and then the other one through like 90 degrees. So what you'll end up having is that it would look nice, but I believe that the weight distribution is more likely to make it stay standing up. This method I did here, you can see it's already leaning over. So this would be ideal if you want to do this on your charcoals over a grill, but if you're going to do it in the oven standing up, I ended up having to lay mine down on its side, and there it is. It's absolutely gorgeous though. I've got a bit of cleaning to do in my oven, by the way, because it did fall over and it splashed all up the sides. Never mind. But and that absolutely lovely. I'm checking the centre. Get a probe right into the core. You want to make sure you're at least 72. There you go, got to 75 degrees centigrade. I put the Fahrenheit, I think it was 161. And I let that rest for a little while. You carve it up like this, it's absolutely lovely. And there we go, nice, nicely presented on a board. I've got a pita bread there. That's a homemade one, but I'll do those again another time. I did but film it. So on another recipe, I'll make some pita breads. But there we go, put my salad in, put some of the chicken in. I've made some garlic mayonnaise, I've got some chili sauce there. And that is a super healthy version of the kebab that you might buy once you're rolling in from your local hostillery. Slightly worse for the wear, 10 pints of reasonably expensive lager. And you have to have a kebab. This way, it's super healthy and you can have this any time of day, have it for lunch. I know, it's radical, but you know, it's Uncle Bat's cookery lessons and we like to break the rules here. So anyway, I'm finishing making that, as much chilli sauce as you want. So I would say, give that a go everybody. Any questions or comments how it turned out, let me know, engage me there. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you in the next video, coming really soon. Bye.